we're looking at an eight mark question on the paper. Now there will be several uh, seven or eight mark questions and it's really important to fill the page up um, with relevant information please. In the one that was on last year's paper of comparing the roles of grandparents and paid carers, I'd like to show you the format of dividing the page in half and putting grandparents on one side and paid carers on the other side. I think sometimes to do a comparison that's an easier way than trying to do it in essay style because you can get more information in. More information translates to band sixes, we want that. So if we're looking at what grandparents do, they're providing for the needs of the, of the people in their care and they're probably doing that with maybe physical needs, social needs and so on. With the paid carers, that will depend on the individuals in their care. If the individuals in their care are people with disabilities, for example, their needs are going to be quite different to the needs of the grandparents providing for the normal grandchild. So think about that in your answer because you could put needs for grandparents and you could say the basic needs may be provided by some. Then on the paid carer side you could say depending on the needs of the individual. If it's a disability case we might have to provide um, special ramps for them to get in and out of access to buildings and that sort of thing. If you're thinking about other um, roles that the grandparents have Think about the fact that they are probably going to be helping with the goals and values of the child. That might be the reason that the parent, the grandparent is caring for the child because maybe the parents are unable to do that or maybe they are not available to do it for an extended period of time. So the grandparents take that role over and they think about the goals and values that they want their grandchild to have. The other hand, on the paid carers, how would we compare them? Again, it depends the circumstances of the paid caring situation. If it's a paid carer to look after somebody who is basically in bed 24 hours a day, they need chronic, they're chronically ill, they need a lot of care that way. Um, the goals and values there might be to try and make the day as pleasant as possible, to make the suffering level as minimal as possible. So they're going to be really quite different roles that are carried out by both the grandparents and the carers, the paid carers in that circumstance. Next role that I think of is thinking about the income or the finances. Now if it's the grandparents looking after grandchildren, they're probably going to be in a situation of not earning an income themselves. They may be on limited income, but they, they may have these grandchildren in their care. So this could be a problem for them. On the other hand, they might be very wealthy grandparents and they may be able to spoil those grandchildren beautifully. So what they would do in that role would be dependent on their income. Think on the paid carer side, Mostly when people have paid carers looking after them, this is a very costly exercise. So you think about the fact that they may be eligible for some benefits, they may be in an institution where they're being looked after by paid carers. It'll probably be a concern to the families of those individuals in care, having that sort of circumstance. So that again, depends on the individual cases as to what the circumstances will be. But we're making, we're drawing a picture of, of things that are quite different when we compare those roles. There are similarities but there are differences in it too. How about nurturing on the role of the grandparent side? That's obviously really, really important. You understand the importance of nurturing young children. So grandparents do that and they do it beautifully. I do the same thing with my grandchildren and then when I've been nurturing them with chocolate frogs or something, I can hand them back at the end of the day. However, on the paid carer's side, we don't expect our paid carers to look after our children in childcare that way because we don't want them to be encouraged to have bad dietary habits, do we? So. There is a responsibility for the paid carer there in their caring role that is different probably with the grandparents. So I'll probably have grandparents united with me and others against me at the moment. Okay, the next one is on developing skills that I think is important. If you as a grandparent can develop skills in your grandchildren, you are going to equip them for a happier, brighter future. 
they're going to learn more from that grandparent input. On the paid carer side, I would think that most parents would hope that that would be exactly the same way as they would do with their children. So we've got a great similarity perhaps in the caring roles there for the individuals, that both of them want the best possible outcomes in the skill development. So they go to childcare, they are taught to skip, run, hop, jump, whatever, but they are taught those sort of skills. Okay, we're, we're getting down the page of running out of things, but remember we're thinking about the comparison between the roles that the grandparents and the paid carers have. Now, I could fill that up with things like individual responsibilities, teaching that if I was the grandparent. The paid carer also does that. They do want to develop in the child the ability to um, look after themselves when they're in a team situation. They become individually responsible for their own gear at childcare so that they, do, they can recognise and pick it up and take it home at the end of the day. Again, it doesn't have to be similar or different. It, it, pointing it out that there is a difference between the two roles. So people, if you think about it in the reality way, I think you're going to get a better answer as well as thinking about the content that's in the syllabus. So hopefully another band six there.